Are you single? Or are you currently in a relationship where you're wondering if you should stay or if you should go? If you are, I've got a great story for you. But before I share that story, I want to talk to you about a little problem. Because I think it's this problem that creates most of the stress and most of the drama in our dating and relationships. And that little problem is our desire to be loved and to love. You see, the desire to love and to be loved is one of the five basic needs that we all have as human beings. And because this need to love and to be loved is kind of wired into our genes, into our DNA, it often causes us to make some bad choices and decisions. Sound familiar? Let me give you an example. Have you ever met someone and in the beginning there's some great chemistry? You know, you're really getting along. But there are signs. They may be little, they may be big. Now sometimes you don't even see them because you're so happy and caught up in the excitement. But other times you know they're there, but you choose to ignore them. And the longer you ignore them, the bigger they get. Or sometimes you kind of BS yourself saying, you know, things will get better or you know what, they'll go away or it doesn't matter. But the longer you ignore them, the more it gnaws at you. And there's something in your gut that says, you need to go, but just stay. And as a result, you're in a relationship where you're really unhappy and unfulfilled and you feel trapped. Maybe you're afraid of leaving. You know, you think, you know, I'm never going to find somebody else. Or maybe you don't want to be alone because f- facing the idea of being alone is very scary, isn't it? Or maybe your friends and family members have told you that you're too picky and you should stay. You know, that you have to settle. And so you believe them. Now, if you're hearing this, you're probably saying to yourself, how does he know me so well? Well, the reason I know you so well is because your story is my story. It's most of our stories. Let me share my experience with you. Several years ago, I was engaged to be married. It was 30 days from the day we were supposed to walk down the aisle. It was supposed to be the best time of my life, but it wasn't. In fact, I was pretty unhappy, and I knew I was unhappy. So one day I was sitting on my couch in the living room, just kind of pondering where I was going. Now, the best way I can explain to you what I was feeling at that moment is I felt like I was in an airplane, and I was just spiraling towards the ground. And it was just a matter of time before we crashed. And the worst feeling of all is I felt like I didn't have a parachute. There was no way out. Pretty bad, huh? Well, after sitting there and staring at the wall for probably a good half hour, I got up and went into the bedroom next to my fiance. And I sat down to her, next to her. And I shut off the television. And I asked her this question. I said, will we ever be happy? Now, I had asked that question or probably a good half a dozen times in the three years we were together. And every time I asked that question prior, I always got the answer, yes, of course. But it was always followed with an after. And it was either, yes, after I get my master's degree. Yes, after I get a new job. Yes, after I get my own apartment. It was always yes, after. And I felt like I was the horse chasing the carrot on the stick. And I believe my fiance because I wanted to. There was a part of me that no matter what my reality was saying, no matter what I was feeling, was BSing myself. And so I chose to stay in a relationship where I was unhappy and unfulfilled. But that night, something was different. When I said to her, Will we ever be happy? This time she said, no. Now, once I realized that there wasn't even a possibility of me being happy, I knew what we had to do. We had to call off the wedding. And she agreed because she kind of felt the same way. Ultimately, what we found out is we were two good people who just weren't good for each other. So as a result of that, we wound up calling off the wedding. And to be honest with you, That wasn't so upsetting to me because I was so unhappy and I kind of felt like I pulled the ripcord and found the parachute. 
And so I kind of got my life back. So that felt really good. But what didn't feel good is that I had to be single again. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know, I had to go back into the dating pool, what I call the dating cesspool. It wasn't something that I really enjoyed, and it wasn't something that I was really good at. But also what I discovered is that dating didn't have to be difficult. In fact, it could be easy. And the reason that it was difficult for most of us is because we make it difficult on ourselves. We make some really bad choices and decisions. And ultimately, here's what I discovered. The quality of our dating and our relationship is directly related to the quality of our choices and decisions. See, I realized that I made things harder on myself than they actually needed to be. Now, at that moment, I realized that I could sit around and blame my ex for what had happened, or I could learn from my mistakes. And I figured three years of relationship hell was enough for a lifetime, and I wasn't going to give her any more power. So I decided that I was just going to learn from my past so that I made sure I didn't repeat it. And so as I sat around contemplating you know, where I wanted to go and, and how I could learn from my mistakes so I didn't repeat them, because I've seen enough people do that, I asked myself this question. And it was this question that literally changed things around for me and just started opening up doors of learning new and better things. And that question was, if I'm going to spend the rest of my life with someone, what is it that I need in order for me to be happy and fulfilled? See, I spent the last three years trying to make my fiance happy and trying to make the relationship work. And because of that, I kind of ignored what was important to me and what I was looking for. So I decided if I'm ever going to even contemplate getting married again, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be happy and fulfilled. Because it's kind of like, you know, the story in the airplane. If you don't put the oxygen on and take care of you first and make sure that you're happy and fulfilled, it doesn't make a difference. So as a result of asking this question, it helped me to get clear on what I really wanted and what I was looking for from that special partner. Because see, once you get clear on what you're looking for and who that, sp that special person is, it makes it much easier to find and attract them. See, it's these little things that I learned in my course, in the course of my events that allowed me to go from dating mess to dating success in less than three months. Because I got to be honest, I wasn't very good at it. See, once I discovered these secrets, the secrets to what I call smarter dating, I was able to find that special person to share my life with. This November, I will celebrate my 10th anniversary with my wife, Natalie. Now, she's not just my wife. She's my partner for life. She's my lover. She's, my, she's the mother of my children. But most importantly, she's my best friend. She's that special person that I get to share my life with as I go through my journey. And, I, and I'm going to be honest that my life is so much better and I'm a better man because I have that someone special to share my life with. Now, I share this with you not to brag or to show you how lucky I am, but to show you what is possible for you is that you can have it all. Because there was that time in my life where, especially after what happened, I was ready to give up. You know, I was just done. I was sick and tired of all the games, you know, the dating games and the relationship games. And I just didn't want any more of it. And I was perfectly content spending the rest of my life on my own. Because I'd much rather be on my own and be happy than be in a relationship where I'm miserable. So what I want you to know is that you can have it all. But it's not going to happen magically. You've got to make it happen. And there are ways to do that. And that's what I'd love to show you. So if this has struck a chord with you, and your story is similar to mine, I'd love to hear from you. I want you to go to the comment box below, right down there, and I want you to tell me what you think is your number one problem or obstacle which is preventing you from having that love and that relationship that you really desire and that you deserve. 
And if you share your problem with me, I promise that I'm going to create some amazing content and give you some direction so that you can create the results that you desire. I look forward to hearing from you soon, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.